Hey there, I'm Douglas from DraftBit, and today we're talking about the video player component. This versatile component allows you to embed and play video content directly within your application. Whether you're displaying a product demo, a promotional video, or user-generated content, the video player provides the tools you need to deliver seamless multimedia experience to your users. In this tutorial, we'll explore how to set it up, configure its properties, style it to fit your app layout, and use the advanced features. So if you're ready to add immersive video content inside your application, let's dive right in. To get started, let's add the video player component to your screen. On the left side in the component tab, let's click add, and then we're going to search for video. Then we're going to add the video component to the screen. And the first thing that happens when we add it, it comes already with a default video. Hey everyone, this is Nick with DraftBit. Today, I'm excited. But then right away, we're going to want to change that. So what we do, so whilst clicking the video component, we're going to go to the data tab. And here in the data tab, there's a source. So in this source, it supports a static URL. So it'll be a URL of wherever the video is available on the internet. Or you can add it as a variable like this using curly braces, put it as URL. Then once we click outside, this is going to create a variable called URL. And why we want to do it that sometimes uh, this video is going to be dynamic. So it might be coming from a backend source, like our own API. And yeah, we can just assign it here. But then for this video, I want to find a video that's living on the internet. And then I'm going to get the URL and then I'm going to come and paste it in here. So that's a static URL. And to do that, I'm going to be using this site called Pixels. It has free videos that you can use inside your applications. And I'm just going to find a video that I like, and then I'm just going to use that URL. So here I found a video that I like. I'm going to right click, then I'm going to say copy video address. Then I'm going to close this, then I'm going to go back here to my source, and I'm going to paste in that video address. And then once I do that, you're going to notice that this video is going to be added to the video component. So once you have the source, your player is now ready to play the video. Up next, we have the video configurations. So up first, we have the component name. This allows you to give your component a descriptive name. For instance, you might name this product demo video uh, if you're using it to showcase a product. Then up next, we have use thumbnail. Enable this toggle to display the thumbnail before the video starts playing. So in our data, we have this thumbnail source. And just like this source, we need to find an image and then take the URL and then we provide it here. And once we do that, we come here to our config and then we enable the use thumbnail. So let's do that. And again, I'm using this site. So this site has some free images that you can use. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the image address. Then I'm going to come back to my thumbnail source and I'm going to add that image. But then the image does not show by default. And to show the image, I need to come here to my config and then I need to say use thumbnail. Then once I do that, only then do we get the thumbnail. Up next, we have resize mode. So this chooses how the video fits within its defined dimensions. We have options like cover, contain, and stretch. And for you, for this to make more sense, I need to go back to the video dimensions. And for the width, I need to give it a very small width. So if I just come to the width and then I say something like 200, for example, so this will be 200 points. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's too small. So let's have it be 350. Okay, that looks okay. Uh, let's go back to our config and then for resize mode. So when I say cover, it's going to try to cover the whole view that it's in. So right now the view that it's in, it's about 350 width and then the height is 215 points. So it's, when you say cover, it's going to try and fit the whole width. But then when you say contain, what contain is going to do, is going to try and contain the video inside that view. Um, so it'll be trying to show the entire video. Then lastly, we have stretch. So stretch is going to try and fit the whole view. Uh, it doesn't really care about the video dimensions. It just needs to fit the view. Then up next, we look at post the resize mode. So this is the same thing as the resize mode, but it's now for the thumbnail. So I went back to use thumbnail, clicked OK. Then now we can go to contain. So we're trying to contain the thumbnail and you can see we now see the whole thumbnail then on the left and right i couldn't really satisfy uh, the whole view so here we're going to see the video underneath then we can have stretch so stretch is going to stretch itself uh, to fit the whole view then we have repeat 
So repeat is telling itself that where we have, you know, these extra spaces, repeat the image again. So that's why you have this image. And then here the image is starting again. So that's what repeat does. Then we have center. It's going to center the image. Then we're going to see uh, the video underneath on the sides. Up next, we have mute audio. Very simple. So if our audio has sound, we can mute the audio. And notice here where there's the audio. It actually has like a cross mark showing that the audio has been muted. Up next, we have use native controls. This gives users built-in uh, playback control, like play, pause, volume, ensuring a user-friendly experience. So this enables us to be able to play the video, pause the video, stop the video, increase the volume. These are the controls that we're seeing here. So by default, they are enabled. We can actually turn them off and we won't be able to get any controls. Now notice we don't get any controls. And then yeah, this might be necessary for situations where you want the video to be like a background video where the users don't play the video, the video just plays automatically, which brings us to our next uh, prop, which is the play automatically. So when this is enabled, the video is just going to play automatically. So yeah, you can see how this can be like a nice background. The video just plays automatically. But then what happens when the video stops, right? It's going to no longer be playing. We can fix that by looping the video. So looping the video, make sure that when the video gets to the end, it starts again. So now we have an endless playing video. Then on our device preview, let's go to our iOS device. Then up next, we're going to look at the starting point. So here we enter a value in milliseconds and this determines the starting point of the video. For example, if we say 3000, so since this is in milliseconds, if we come in here and we say 3000, our video is going to start at three seconds. So notice how our video starts from zero and ends at 15 seconds. So if I come in here and starting point and then I say 6000 milliseconds, our video is now going to start at 006. So it's going to start at six seconds. And notice it's now seven, eight. So it starts at six seconds. Then up next we have playback rate. So setting the playback rate with a numeric value, for example, one is normal speed, 0 0.5 means the video is going to be slower. So if I say 0 0.5, then when we play our video, it's going to run much more slow. Yeah, notice now our video is now very, very slow. Up next, we have volume. We can adjust the volume by entering a numeric value from 0 to 1, and this increases the volume. Then let's have everything back to normal. Then let's go back to the device preview. Then we go back to the web preview. Then next, we're going to look at the interactions. So if we go to interactions, we'll see the interactions that are available to this video player. And the first one that you're going to see is the on playback status update. So this trigger runs actions when the playback status changes. For instance, when the video is played, paused or stopped, this is going to run. Then up next, we have on playback finish. This trigger executes actions when the video finishes playing. And to test this out, let's click on the on playback status update. And when this happens, we're just going to, we're just going to console log onto the screen. And what I want to do is I just want to console log the status. So this gives us a status, like a playback status of what's going on. So we can see what's going on. So we're just going to console log that to the screen. And then let's go back to on playback finish. We click that. And again, we just want to console log. And in this case, we're just going to say video has stopped. Then let's go back. Then we open our console log. We delete everything. And then now let's test it out. So once we play the video, we're going to see the on playback status update. Then it's going to, so it gives us a nice object where we can see is the video playing? Then it gives us is the video loading? Is the video buffering? current uh, position in milliseconds, duration. So it gives us sort of like a status update, right? And why is it saying is the video playing false, right? Because the video is not playing. But then before that, the video was playing. It wasn't loading, it wasn't buffering. And you know, these are very valuable for your application because you can now come into this object and you can say, okay, if the video is loading, I want to show a loading spinner to the user. If the video is buffering, I want to show to that to the user that the video is buffering. Uh, let's delete that then on playback finish so when the video finishes so let's just speed it up then play it right and what do you see at the bottom 
video has stopped so these are very useful for that and you know instead of console logging when the video stops maybe you want to do something maybe you want to navigate the user to another screen to say hey you finished watching the video maybe you want to you're building an application like maybe like youtube where if the video stops we need to play the next one so that's how we know that the video has stopped and we can control that here next up let's talk about styles so we don't have many styles right we just have you know these basic styles that come with uh, all draft bit components but you know with the video we have size styling and what this allows us to do it allows us to style the size of this uh, video component like the width you can see on the side we have like a white sort of like background that means that this video component is not occupying the full width and to do that we just come in here and we say 100 percent 100 percent tells it that it needs to occupy the full width and as you can see it now occupies the full width and here we can play around with the height minimum width maximum width minimum height maximum height so these are pretty self-explanatory then up next we have actions so with the video component player you can define specific actions to control playback for this tutorial we're just going to focus on two so that's the play media and the pause media but we actually have four so we have the play media pause media sick media position and toggle media playback i'm going to go into depth of describing each one but then for the example i'm just going to show two the play and the pause and to showcase those i'm going to go back to uh, the component picker i'm going to add two buttons so one two and then what i want to do inside this com this screen is i'm going to go to styles and then i'm going to have a gap so what the gap allows is it allows space in between these components as you can see the buttons are touching and once i add that the buttons are no longer touching and on the first button i'm going to go to the data tab and i'm going to call it play then the second button i'm going to call it pause then I'll we go back to the first button on the interactions. So when you press this button, what do I want to happen? I want it to play media. So it's an action. And this action is going to ask me which video component do you want to target? And for that, I'm going to target the video component. And this is where the naming is very important. Because if I had multiple video components and I come and I click here, I'm going to get a drop down of all those components. And naming is very essential because that's where you're going to be able to pick the correct one. Then I go back to the pause button on press. I want to pause media. Then video component. So now by clicking the play button, the video is going to start playing by clicking the pause button. And that's how useful the actions are. In addition to play media and pause media actions, the video component also supports the following advanced actions. So we have what's called the seek media position. This action allows you to move the playback position of the video to a specific point in time. You can specify the positions in milliseconds. Uh, for example, if you want the video to skip to one minute and 30 seconds, you would need a value of 90,000 milliseconds. So I'm not really going to show that with an example, but just imagine that we have a button here that's going to say jump to the middle of the video. And then when you click that, we'll go on press, then we're going to specify in milliseconds where it should jump to. And then we have toggle media playback. So that's the last one. This action simplifies playback control by toggling the current state of the video. If the video is playing, the action will pause it. If the video is paused, the action will playback so this is just an action that does the opposite of what's currently happening so if our video is playing and we click uh, that action the video is going to stop if the video is stopped and we click that action the video is going to continue so it just does the opposite it's a toggle and that's how you use the video player component draft bit to recap we covered how to add the component to the screen set the video and thumbnail sources configure playback options like autoplay loop and we set up interaction triggers and we style the player to fit your app's description. This component is incredibly versatile and ensures users have a smooth and engaging video experience. Thanks for tuning in. If you found the tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more DraftBit tips and tricks. See you in the next video.